Hello Craftaholics and welcome back to my studio and if this is your first time here it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Peggy and welcome to my studio. So today I'm going to continue on with cards 6 through 10 of the Kendra's Card Challenge for this um, quarter and I am doing Christmas oh, since it's Christmas in July I am doing Christmas papers and if you missed the first video I will link it down below and up in the cards if I can um, so you can just see the first five being done which it was a very long video and I am gonna try and make this one a bit shorter we'll see how that goes anyway um let's get started I have all of my everything is cut out for me already and in my envelopes Should put that there and I do have the same adhesives um foam tape I have my pop dots and squares I've got my sticky gems over here and I have my barely art glue so there's the front the front's there somewhere okay let's do card number six. Oh, and I also cut out the little sketches that I have to follow to put the cards together so this one uses papers from like well it uses all of the papers actually but just little bits of them and I decided in this part I'm going to put a sentiment. So what I have is a die cut from a Scrap Diva Designs die of her Christmas words. I just don't have the dot for the J. Um, I forget the technical term for it, but I probably just use a little black sticky gem. Um, but I do have everything else is just my cut paper and I did cut all of my banners already. So let me lay those out. And again, with my white, because there's a lot showing, I did use an embossing folder with holly and berries, again, that I used in the last video. So the first thing, I'm going to put my base aside. First thing that I want to do is put my white here on my black backing piece here. Look at that. Okay. And sometimes when you have embossed your cardstock, sometimes depending on the type of embossing folder, you may need a little more glue. Um, this isn't too too much because it's just a regular embossing folder. But if you use a 3D, um, the grooves on the back, the debossing side, is a lot deeper. And you might need a little extra glue just in case it goes in those little pockets so it will adhere to your base so there is that it is not no it's not all the way straight is it let's pull that off and let's try this again uh, this is not starting off well I and mean, if you hear noise in the background my husband and my puppies are home so they may start barking we just got a new neighbor who um has a dog a big dog and my boys are little and they have a but they're they're very good at trying to protect us so they've been barking at the other dogs through the wall so hopefully that will not happen during this filming and it'll be nice and quiet but we will see so put the pin in there just for right now okay so the way this one is, is, my pieces will overlap a little bit. Let's put the first one. Let's just go right. Let's just go for it, right? Okay. We'll start with the largest one first. And I like this paper with the green, with the swirls. I think it's really, really pretty. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue this. One. And the other side is pretty too with the big poinsettias. Let's put that down first. Gizmo, he's a growling. If they see anything out the window, even if they think they see something, you get that. Gizmo, do my second side. If you hear the whispering, that's my husband. Let's see. Shh. You know, they were very quiet until I turned on the camera. Isn't that the way it always goes? 
this is something I wouldn't use like pop dots for. It's just, it would be so many layers. It, and it, it just, I don't think it would work very well. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I don't, I would not do it personally. And I'm trying to keep my overlapping the same distance for the most part between the layers. Let's see. But as we're getting smaller, I may just let it go over a little bit. But I am also trying to keep them straight. So let's do this last little one. Which, and if you're not, if you're un, um, familiar with Kendra's card challenge, I did kind of talk about it in the last video. It's where you take, is it, that looks straight, yeah. Six pieces of um, six by six cardstock, and you cut it in a way so that we're making at least 15, well, th this time it's 15 cards, but I have seen some of the challenges where she's made like 17 cards out of just the pieces that are cut. And I will, again, I did it in the last video, but I will also link um, Kendra's introduction video for this, for this quarter, so you can see exactly, she'll explain every aspect of the challenge and everything to you. So then this one is gonna go right about there. Now this could also this could be puffed up as well, but I'm just I'm just gluing these right down again, just because it's so much. But let's see, guys. I'm uh, let's see. Gizmo, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, sorry guys, I had to dogs had to get put back up on the bed behind me. Okay, let me put my eyes back on. Okay. And what I should have done when I cut this out and I wasn't thinking, I should have adhered adhesive right to my cardstock. So it would be gizmo. It would be self-sticking. You can't, he wants to sit on my lap. That's why if you hear it in the background. But not right now, bud. Anyway. Ugh. That is what I should have done. But I did not, so we'll just use glue. And I am going to place it probably right there, I think. I think that looks good. Okay. All right. And like I said for that, now again, you could um, pop this up with tape but I just decided to make it all flat for this one. So let me get, where it is a pokey tool here. I'm just gonna use one of the smaller. Black gems right above my jolly, there we go. And then I think I'm gonna put Maybe just a few little gems. Well, let's see. I'm just gonna put a couple of the smaller red gems. And these are the ones I got at Michael's. Let's kind of bring a little bit more of the red in. So there we have our first card was number six. Put it aside. Uh, okay. Did you guys catch that? If you didn't, <laughs> shame on you. That was just, <laughs> okay. Ay, ay, ay. It's one of those days, isn't it? All right. Making sure the card base opens this way. It's not a card unless you put it on the card base now, is it? And I did make that mistake when I did my, my very first set of cards last month. I forgot to put one on a base until after the fact, which, hey, 
had a lot on my mind. We've been packing up a lot of extra stuff that's kind of hanging around the apartment that we're in. So there's a little bit more room. And we're also on the search for a temporary rental house. So we always want to make sure. There we go. Now we're done. Just making sure we have stuff ready to go for that. Okay, let me get rid of that one. And this is the next one, which is interesting because it's at an angle and it actually lists all the directions on how to do it. So, this one, I decided to do it a little bit different. I'm doing white on white actually. And this is my piece that's going to go in the corner. And that is also why I embossed it. So you can definitely get the definition between that and the plain white. And then for my cutout part, it's just part of one of the cutouts from the paper pack. So what we're going to do is that is a square piece. Is this way off the top and what it says to do let me see mark one and seven eighths on one side okay let me get sorry for the reach people <laughs> let me get my Tim Holtz ruler and I should have had this marked ahead of time and I do apologize so I need to go one and seven eighths which is just an eighth below two inches. So what's gonna happen is that mark goes up to the corner like that. And then the red, the, the edge goes right along at the top here, like that. So I am going to add it's a little confusing to start with. First, make sure that your card base is facing the right way. And I'm sorry it's so down and not like in the center. Let me try to do a little bit better with that. But I am going to put glue. I can always add a little bit more. But so we're taking that, that one and seven eighths mark in the corner and then we're lining up the corner there. That is very close. I'm just gonna add a little more glue under here just to make sure we have it all. Good, there we go. And again, because they're trying to match corners, um, I'm not going to kind of bump it up at all. And there'd be a little, little confusing trying to do that. So there was that part and it flew away. There we go. And then it calls for two of the scraps, which these are the two that I had, and then another piece. But what I did, I took, this is a scrap from my first color that I used. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to use this scrap, then I'm gonna line this one up, and then I love this green plaid so much. And then I'm gonna line the green plaid on the end of it that way. So. And then you just butt it right up. Or you can actually um, make it curl like this. If you join me with this challenge, which that would be awesome, um, just go to Kendra's and sign up. Um, you can actually put them on this sheet as well, but I, I like the. If I was using a sentiment over here, I would probably do that. But since I'm just putting something actually in the spot where it calls for, I'm just gonna do it this way, like right alongside. I hope that makes sense. You just want to make sure that at the bottom, everything is lined up nice and even. Right there. When it was saying was instead of putting it down alongside, you could line it up right on this card. But I'm trying to take up a little bit more space. Um, 
don't do it that way. Since my sentiment is actually over on the other side. But you could actually just put something here and then a sentiment there. That's one thing. They are a little bit open to interpretation. Okay. Yeah, those are glued down nicely. They just have to dry. Let me put the... I'm trying to remember to put my pin in the glue so I don't have a problem like last time when everything kind of got stuck. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use bigger, longer scissors. I will just, since nothing else is around, I will use these. They're not going on any wet glue or anything, which I did get wet glue on my surface, but not a big deal. So what you do in a case like this, since you want a nice tidy card, just turn it over. And that is where you trim from, is the back. Now you can do this with scissors like I'm doing, which is probably the easiest. Or if you wanted to, if you're really good with your paper trimmer, you can do it that way. Or you can use a craft knife. Whatever is best for you. But then you get your nice tidy edges. See how that looks? Really pretty. Okay, let me get these pieces out of here over this way a little bit. Okay. The only other thing I have is my little sentiment that's going here. And I am going to pop this up on some tape. Well, you know, I'm just going to use some of the squares, I think. These are the ones I got from Michael's. Also. Oops. Let's give a little bit of dimension to this. Now, you could also, like, before I glued it down, you can also take some ink and go with a really light hand, so only the raised parts. It's a little bit harder with just a regular 2D um, embossing folder, but you could just so the raised parts get um, some coloring to them. My hands, they shake a little too much to do that. <laughs> um, and like I said, with just a 2D embossing folder like this is, it's a little more difficult, but it can be done. But that is an option if you do something like this on your own cards. And then this just is going to line up. I'm going to do it that way so it's even the bottom and the sides. There is that. And then I think just for a little bit of something, I think I'm going to take some more of those red gems. And I am just going to put a small one medium and then just another small one up top. There we go. And that is my second card. And in person, it looks, it doesn't look so white just because there is the embossing from the, on that piece. But that is card number two. Put that back there. Get, put my envelope over there. Okay. And now the third one, which sits this way. Now, this one was, that, that took a little bit of measuring. Not a big deal, but let me put my envelope over here. Oh, okay. All it is is you're given the measurements to go in up one and three eighths here, and then over seven eighths here, and then you just fold it over. And it's going to on your base here. I forget which order I had them in, but it will go this way. Now, the only one that I've turned over 
this is the side that I've used on every other card, but it was just, it, I couldn't get it to work any other way. So I decided to flip it over. So I've got the poinsettia is in green here and then other things and like red there. So we're going to go that way first. But what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is take just a little bit of glue and glue down my little flaps. Now I do, I did score, but I do have a little bit of cracking here. So that is something, um, sorry for reaching guys in front of you, but I have, this is, um, walnut stain ink on here. I just don't have any green handy, but you can probably use a matching ink just to kind of cover up your little white spots or a marker or something else. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to reach again just to cover up those. Although a good amount of it will be covered up anyway with this white circle that's going to go on there. But I did score, like I said, I scored them on a, on a scoreboard just to get a good, a good fold because last month I tried to do it by hand. It turned out really bad. So when in doubt, pull out the scoreboard. When in doubt, pull the scoreboard out. And then these are going to, they're going to touch in the middle. I'm going to touch all the way around and just leave a border around the edge. And this is something, if you want to get really, really precise, you can measure. Um, so that they're exactly even. Or if they're off a little bit, you can always shave a little bit of paper off. It's not that big of a deal. But we are going to, let's see. I'm going to set that maybe up just a tad. So there we go. I'm going to start with this one. And again, when you're doing something like this, be sure to see if you have a directional paper or not, which mine does. Just be a little mindful of that. And I'm going to put it I think right there to start with. And we'll start with that one there. Now you could also use um, something like um, like Fabri-Tac, sorry, uh, to glue this down so you get a little bit more wiggle room out of it in case you get nervous about it. But barely art, um, I, I've also used art glitter glue in the past, but barely art glue gives you just a little bit more room, a little more wiggle room than art, although they're both very good glues. But I just prefer the barely art because it has a little more, a little more drawing time. And you can add a little more glue if you need, you know, don't want it to dry extremely quickly. So again to get a little more room. Okay. And cars like car cars cars like this, they do pack like a really big punch, I think, with the way they look just with all the different colors and everything. It's it's a good effect. I really, really like it actually. Okay. There's that one. Okay, then it just called for, um, supposed to be a one in, like a circle and a, but instead of doing a, two circles, I did a snowflake on a white circle because I thought it looked really cool. And yes, it's a black snowflake, I know, but white would not have looked good on this. So, I'm go and again, I should have used an adhesive sheet and I will show you guys how to do that when you're doing, when you're cutting um, die cuts out or any anything where you need to do like well come on like precision gluing on something I can show you I will show you actually I'll do a video on that how to do that
I also just got, I'm starting to get more, that's my husband if you hear him laughing. Um, I, I'm starting to get more into um, using stamps and I, and I bought some stencils, which I've never used stencils yet. I am, you know what, I'm not gonna glue this. I'm gonna pop this up. And I just got a gorgeous set from Altenew. It is their July, <clears throat> um, it's like a whole card making set. And I am actually going to do a video on that, I believe. But it's, it's gonna be fun. It's, I, I've never done stencils. So it'll be a first, but it's, it's funny because I, I had seen somebody else do a video with this kit and when I went to look, it, it was gone, it was sold out. And then they opened up, well, that's not gonna work very easy now, is it? Um, they opened up some more subscriptions for July. So I, I did manage to get it. As, when you see it, you'll see, it's gorgeous. Um, it'll be some, it'll be a new kind of video for me. It'll be stamping, stenciling, and die cutting. So these, I don't like these round ones. They don't like to come off. It is stuck to the round. There we go. Okay. And we're already 26 minutes. Oh no. I'm halfway in. No, more than halfway in. I think we're doing okay. Last video, like I said, was over an hour. And I apologize. I'm not used to doing something like this, you know? Where I'm following somebody else's thing. So, it's something new. Okay, we are giving this dimension. And thank goodness it's a snowflake, so it doesn't matter which way it's going. Um, you just have to decide what you want where, and I think we're gonna put it just like that. But you do wanna make sure that it is in the center. So. And there we go. It has just enough to pop it up there. And I I don't think, I mean, you can also put a sentiment in there. Um, again, I'm checking my card and make sure I'm opening it the right way. But I don't, think a sentiment is always necessary. That's just my prerogative. Um, so, I mean, it's obviously, it's a Christmas card. But if it was like birthday or something, then I would definitely put a sentiment on the front. But I think for this, I think it's okay to just have the snowflake there. I think it is acceptable. I'm just gonna pre press this whole thing down on the front. Okay, there's number three. Really pretty. Okay. Okay, then this is the next one, which is actually card nine. And it is supposed to go this way. But because of the orientation of my one paper, I'm actually going to do it this way, sitting up and down. Um, just because these go downward, and I thought off to the side it would look kind of silly. So, but again, I have a the white. This is um, white dove cardstock, 110 pound from Michaels, and then I just have the black for the base. And again, I have. I love this holly. I have embossed this piece again. So this is going to sit this way. And then evenly these pieces will sit this way. And then this will go in the middle. Again, that's another cutout. And since it's six by six, they're small enough, they can actually be used like this, which is really, really awesome. But I am going to, instead of using this, I'm going to, oops, for that one, I am going to use the Fabri-Tac. Um, this is my Fabri-Tac. It's just in a different bottle. So it's easier for my hands to maneuver. And I got a dried end in there. Ugh, come on, out. That's what happens if glue 
if glue gets into the tip of your your cap okay but this will just help make it be able to position everything a little bit better and I did just refill it so I shouldn't have any problems with it not wanting to come out so Let's put this one down next. So how's everybody doing? Is it hot where you are? So I know it's supposed to be getting hot everywhere. Believe me, where I am in Texas, it's it's getting pretty hot, trust me. Ugh. We already we've already had a few days over a hundred. And the humidity last year wasn't so humid here, but this year, whew, I don't know what the deal is. And then this last one. Okay. Now I'm going to pray to this one. And it will fit nicely right there in the middle. And the border will be the same. So I'm going to put this down first. And again, if you can see what I was talking about with the grooves, there's the deboss side. And see how they go in a little bit more. So you may, that's where you want to, and maybe a little more glue than normal, just because it's not a flat surface to a flat surface. Especially if you have a 3D embossing folder, the depth is even more so. And if you want me to show you a little bit about both of them, let me know in the comments. And I will do a video on embossing and die cutting and whatnot. Okay, there are those. Looking good. And then I am going to, again, pop up my sentiment. Something like this. I think this all needs to stay flat. That's At least that's how I prefer it. Like, you know, flat against the back. Just because it's so much. And I think if they're popped up, it's going to look a lot busier than it is. You know what I mean? So, I'm just going to keep mine that way. I'm trying with my nails. Well, <laughs> what little bit of nails are left. Oh, that's the finger. The one that I said um, got smashed. It's looking better and it's starting to grow out now. But that's the one that got hurt and it was really a mess when my nail it got stuck on the refrigerator door and it ripped right off of my nail bed it was very painful but it's it's getting better as you can see all right this i want to make sure it's straight and i want to make sure you know i'm actually going to put a little bit of the of the fabric tack on my It will, it's just a little bit, just to help me in case I need to slide it around. Because once the foam dots, let me see, are down, they are down. There we go. All right. Hey, we're doing better. It's only a half hour. Getting better. One more card to go. So there is our next one. And again, I know, I know, I got to put it down. But again, if you, I don't know if you can see on the side, there's just enough to bump it up. And again, instead of using the dots, make sure that opens the right way. Um, I'm just going to use the fabric tack since it's right here. You can also take fun foam and you can cut it out to match, like glue it down and then cut it out to match the shape. And that'll give an even, even thickness throughout. And I have done that before. Like, I did it on one when I had a whole big strip I wanted to pop up. I used a piece of foam. And it looks pretty good. As long as the color's coordinating, because you will see it from the side. But you just cut it in a little bit, but it works. Okay, so there is number four, which is actually number nine. You know what I mean. And here, last one, number ten for today. Put my envelope back over there. I'm just like throwing them on a the shelf. But 
this is the final one, which again, I am turning because I have directional paper again. So I'm gonna turn it on its side once again, but not a big deal. So this has a lot of layers. And the first one, again, my white pieces are both embossed again with my holly. I love that one. And I'm not sure where I got that. I think I just got it on Amazon, honestly. I don't remember. But we may do a little more with the foam tape on this one. Make it a little bit more special. But again, remember, if you're mailing the cards, um, you need to be mindful of how thick they are because they cannot, if they're too thick, they cannot go through the sorting machine and it costs more at the post office to mail them. Unless you're hand delivering or you don't mind the extra cost. So I'm gonna glue all of this down first. You know, let's, that's the actual side that it was. Yeah, we'll use that. I like that side a lot better, actually. The red wasn't the side that I used for other cards. I'm using for other cards, so. Go. And I love the wood tone. Though you don't see a whole heck of a lot of it. It's all good. Let's do it that way. Although it didn't have to be because it's just a background color, but I think it looks a lot nicer than, than the red would. So, because I think this would actually get lost with the red. Okay. It's down anyway. So, I'm going to put paper B, which one goes to one side and one goes to the other side. Don't know why I switched to fabric tag now, but hey, it's all good. Okay, here is the one piece. Oops. And then I need to slide that down a little bit more. I'm gonna try and make them even. I know the sketch shows up a little bit closer, but We slide it down just a little bit, I guess. And slide this one up more. Can even them out a little bit. There we go. And then this, I'm going to put right in the center. Again, I'm not doing a, a sentiment on this one. Hmm. Let's wait on that. Have an idea. Okay. So I'm just going to take the roll of tape. And I, know I didn't add any extras on that. We'll, we'll go back and we'll, we'll add a little bit to some a couple of the other ones in a second. I'm just trying so hard to make it a shorter video that I'm kind of forgetting to do a couple of things I wanted to do. Sorry about that, guys. My brain is not working very well. And I don't know. My Tim Holtz scissors are nonstick. There we go. My other nonstick scissors are out in the other room. So... And I will also, if, if you guys want to see, I will sh I can do a video on how to make card boxes um, in case you do want to ship some of these that have more, more layers to them. So, and I'm just going to put, at that point, they're so pretty. I'm just going to put a couple strips in the inside so it doesn't completely collapse in the middle, which I've had that happen before. It's not fun. 
And you can always take a bone folder if you need to. This is a Teflon bone folder. Just to make sure. You always make sure everything is down good that you're using for adhesives. So they don't pop up. I've had that happen as well. When I first started doing card making and things and other crafts, I didn't stick the tape down well enough. I thought, this tape is going to stick. And I had things pop off. So, take it from me. It can happen. Okay. So there's our first layer. And again, make sure that your card base is opening in the right direction. And if you have directional, that it is facing the right way. I'm going to put this. Centered. On there. I'm going to put some foam tape on this. Which, and I had intended to use the red side. But I just think the other side looks nice. Ah, it makes this stand out a little bit more, I think. Going onto the wood grain background. I'm just going to put like one in the middle again so it doesn't. And again, in the middle, on the white is where... You would put a sentiment if you wish to have one. But again, I just like the, the poinsettia on it. Just make sure that it's down. For some reason, my, pokey, my fingers are working better than the pokey tool did for peeling the tape back in here. And then this is going to center, right? I'm going to put a little bit of Fabri-Tac on this. It'll be a little more noticeable if it's off center um, than the larger piece is. So just a little bit, just to, so it gets some wiggle. I think that looks good. And the last part is this one, which again, I'm going to pop up. So we're going to get a lot of dimension on this one. But this is normally where you would put your sentiment if you wanted to use one. But I just chose to use the poinsettia pitch because I think it's so pretty. Okay, and we'll see if my nails work fine on this one as well. These little, these ones from Michael's, the round ones are really hard to get the backing off. It just doesn't want to, doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. And then this is going to go. Yeah, right in the center. Now this one does have quite a bit of dimension. Um, it probably could, you know, now it would be too much to actually go through a machine. I think it's a little too too bumpy, but I am I was trying to well, see they're a little well I guess we can use the bright bright red that's cool I was trying to use a deeper red but there is a little bit of brighter red here and in some of the flowers so it should work we're supposed to have three dots on this one I'm going to put three there and I'm going to actually put three here I think I'm going to use my small ones from here. And you can put a little bit of glue. I usually do under these to make sure that they'll stay secure. But I haven't had a really big problem with these falling off. These um, I get on Amazon. And I will link it in the video. I will link it down in the description box which ones they are. 
Like I said, I'm going to put three on this side as well. It's kind of give a little symmetry there. So you could also put some down here where, but I like that. I think that looks really, really good. So there's that one. We'll leave that there. And this one, and what I'm going to do on this one is just, I should have smaller ones, but where the two little berries are, there's two little tiny ones. Put those over it on there. Just a little, little bling on that one. So we have one, we have, let's get this out of the way. We have two. We have this one where I think in the middle. But like an Aurora Borealis kind of one that it's actually going in different colors. It's just kind of hard to see. And then what I could do actually to add Jeezy's don't want to pick up today is on the end of each one, put a small one. Just for a little, little bling. Add a little something. Since it is just black. But I think this is, her challenges are a good way to use up some of your six by six papers that might be laying around. I know I have some and it's, I can't, come on. I can't always forget new things to do with them. So they, okay, there's that one, our next card. And then we have this one. And we have this one. So there you go. And they did about 45 minutes. Got five cards. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me move them down a little bit. Please give it a thumbs up and share it with a crafty friend. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. And that's all I have today. I will see you in the next one for the last five cards. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.